You know I've got that Will Stetson swag. This is so epic, can we reach 10 likes on this video? Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. As you all know, I play also using a keypad, more specifically a simpad 2 from Momokai. If you go on their website though, you'll see that there's a smaller version called Simpad Nano, advertised as a hot swappable macro pad. More like micro pad, am I right? <laughs> I'm sorry. I've been very curious to try out this keypad for a while now, and that's exactly what we're gonna be doing today. Let's get into it. And there it is. That's the box right there. We've got a bit of an anime girl on here, and she looks to be around 5000 years old, at least according to Reddit. Opening up the box, we've got the user manual, which I'm not really gonna read. Everything else is packed nicely in this neat little box, and you can even get some foam that you can perhaps recycle for future keyboard modding. Very nice. The star of the show is of course the keypad, and as you can see it's very very small. Comes in two colors, I've got the black variant. We have an USB Type-C opening on one side, and an extra microscopic key on the other. There's a sticky pad that you can use to stick your device firmly on your desk, USB Type-C cable, two extra transparent keycaps, switch puller, since the keypad is all swappable, and this keychain string, I don't really know how to call it, but you get it. Taking a closer look at the keypad, it feels very nice and sturdy. We've got two stacks of acrylic sandwiched in between two polished aluminum casings, and the keypad really emphasizes its portability, with the whole keychain gimmick. Honestly, I don't really like the string, so I'm just gonna take it off. I laid the keypad on my desk in order to place the sticker on the bottom, first I removed the white protective film on one side, place it under, and remove the other clear protective film. As you can tell from my fingerprints, this is very very sticky, and extremely powerful by the way. I barely apply any pressure and the keypad is already stuck to my desk, doesn't move around or anything, and it's perfectly ready to be used. I'm using a keycap puller just to be fancy, but you can absolutely use your fingers to take the keycaps out. I wanna show you the PCB, so I'm gonna take the switches off with the provided switch puller, and as you can see we've got a north facing PCB featuring KO hot swappable sockets. These are compatible with all Cherry MX type switches and clones, including the more common 3 pin switches, as well as the fancier, often more expensive 5 pin switches. I forgot to mention, but the keypad comes by default with gutter on red switches with a milky housing. I find those to be very fitting since they diffuse and spread the RGB more evenly, creating this very nice effect once you plug it in. The keypad looks great, it's very satisfying to see those radiant colors, but it looks even better once you add the PBT keycaps. As for the transparent ones, they're good, they provide the exact same feeling and texture, so it's really all preference which ones you wanna go for, based purely on the aesthetics you aim to achieve. Personally, I much prefer the contrast provided by the black keycaps, so I'll stick to those. If you don't like gutter on reds, you can purchase different packs of switches from Momokai. They come in this very nicely sealed bag, to avoid any pins being damaged or bent during shipping. The keypad is plug and play. It works right off the bat, and the default keybinds are ZX for the keys and left control plus R for the tiny switch, making it a quick retry button of sorts. If you want to change those keybinds, you can download the SIMPAD drivers on the Momokai product page. For some reason, Windows Defender flags the exe file as dangerous, but after adding it as an exception it works just fine, and I've been using it for a very long time with no issues whatsoever. Once it detects your SIM pad, you can change the keybinds and a bunch of other settings, such as the way the RGB behaves. As you know, I like to keep it green, but you can always play around with different settings and presets until you find the look that you enjoy best. With all of that out of the way, only one question remains. Is it good for playing Gosu? In my opinion, this is a fantastic keypad and I really enjoy using it. For the past couple months, many people asked me, Spaza, if you have so many mechanical keyboards, why do you play using a keypad? I figured this might be the time to further expand on that. 
Back in the day, I used to only really rate keyboards based on how good they were for Osu, which is why, in my mind, something like an HyperX Alloy Origin score was actually better than a Leopold. Yes. These days, I value keyboards based on their feel, sound, and I only use them for typing, editing, and really, general use. Having a completely different small device that I can use to smash circles with has become extremely convenient, and other than the well-known advantages with keypads being very portable and giving you the opportunity to quickly try out a bunch of switches, I also like how they allow you to play with different tapping angles, for example. Plus, I've got a very specific thing going. You see, I play using index and middle finger, and when I really relax my tapping, mostly during death streams, my ring finger has the tendency to follow my middle finger, if so to speak. As a result, when I play using a keyboard, my ring will more often than not accidentally hit the shift key or really any other key nearby on the same row. I find that to be very distracting and kind of annoying during gameplay, but with a keypad, this doesn't really happen since the keys are completely isolated. Even then, I still rarely hit the left side of the keypad with my finger, but it's no big deal since it doesn't have quite the same impact as touching another key. With the Simped Nano, that problem disappears, since there's literally not enough space for you to possibly tap on that corner. In this clip I'm trying really hard to do it, but I just can't, because that part is so, so tiny. Definitely many good things to say about this keypad, but let's talk about some of the cons. The first one isn't specific to this model, it's for every simpad really, the switch puller. Even though it's decent, it's very thin, and as a result it's a lot more awkward to use, especially for a beginner. Not that switch pullers are particularly expensive or anything, but it would have been very nice of them to provide a more thick, standard sized puller like this one, to make the job much much easier. This one is less of a con and more of a nitpick, but I don't really think this quick retry key is super necessary. It's so tiny and in such an unnatural position, it's kind of awkward to press and I don't think most people will ever use it in game. Good news though is that it's basically impossible to click by accident, so you won't experience any retry incidents. The other thing I want to point out is just how loud the Simped Nano is in comparison to the standard one. We have them both here side by side, and I'm gonna do a quick sound test using the exact same unlooped Gateron yellow switches. Listen to this. As you can probably tell, the difference in sound signature is night and day. The Simped Nano is a lot more clacky and deep compared to the standard one, and that could be a good or bad thing depending on your taste. Personally, I love how it sounds, but it's undeniably a lot louder, so depending on where and when you want to play, this could be an issue for you. I don't have a scientific explanation as to why this happens, it could be that since the keypad is so small, there's probably not enough space for the sound to be even slightly dampened or be distributed on the keypad's surface, but I honestly have no idea. I've only had this keypad for one month, so I can't really speak on the durability yet, but considering my simpad is still perfectly normal after more than a year, I have no reason to believe this will be any different. Many of you guys actually asked me how exactly I managed to not break my keypad this whole time, so I've considered making a video on how to take proper care of your keypad and prolong its lifespan. Let me know in the comments if that's something you'd be interested in. Overall, do I recommend this keypad? Absolutely. It really is a fantastic device, and given my very specific needs with my tapping technique and all, I will probably be using this for the time being. If you want to buy the Simped Nano or the standard one for yourself, you can go on momokai.com and use code SPAZA at checkout for 10% off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and I'll see you all in my next video. Have a good one guys.